In this section, I am going to cover how you would mark non-intensity parameters on the EOS. Let's take a quick look at an example of what happens when you don't mark. So we have some moving lights up in our Q6. Q7 fades them out. They have not been moved anywhere else. We have an interim Q8. And they go to a new position and have an intensity value in Q9. And there's that lovely visible move that happens in Q9. So ideally, what, now what we want to have happen is the lights to already be in their position when the intensities come up. And we can do that using the mark feature on the console. We want to be in the queue that needs to be marked. And then we need to simply select the lights that need to mark. In this case, our Mac 700s and our Mac 2Ks. We hit mark, enter. Mark is uh, here on the keypad, right in the middle at the top. Mark, enter. We've now put a manual mark instruction into those channels. Now we've marked the entire channel. I could mark a single parameter of those channels or any one channel if I want to, but I just picked all of them and I'm marking the entire channel. And they're indicated there with a little red M. Now because it's a red M, that means it's a manual value and I have to store this in the queue. This is important. So I select the channels, mark, enter. Now I update the queue and I'm updating queue nine because that is where the information is going to live. And now we can see a couple of things. In our queue list, we see in queue number nine, we have an R, which is the reference in the mark column to tell us that that is the point that the console will be looking to put the lights. And the little X in Q8 indicates that the console is suggesting where that move will occur. And it's up to me now to decide if I want to confirm that that move should occur in the queue or if I want to move it somewhere else. Now, by default, the console is going to suggest the latest queue possible, but I could choose any queue in the system to have that mark occur. If I see the X appear while programming, that also can indicate that I have broken a mark that was previously set up. So now, if we run that sequence again, I'll back up into Q6. There in this position, Q7 fades them out. Q8 fades lights that are on a Q8, but also notice on our channel display, we have all of our parameters are set and they are referencing Q9. That's their current position is Q9. And then when I take Q9, all we get is an intensity fade up. So that is using mark. Now the reason the console put the mark in Q8 or the movement in Q8 is because by default, it's gonna pick the latest Q possible in the Q list. If you don't want this to happen, there is an option to change that to the earliest possible queue in the queue list. In this case, I can choose the channels, and when I hit mark, I get a soft key, and I can change uh, to the earliest point in the queue list, if that's, if that's more convenient for me. I can also manually decide where I want those channels to mark, and that is by making a queue in my queue list a marking queue. And in this case, maybe I manually want to set them to their new position in queue 7, so I simply say queue 7 mark enter and now instead of a little x my m in q7 tells me that i have told them to mark in q7 so those are a couple of things now timing on your marks work in the following way if i don't have any discrete timing in my q number nine which is where i've got the lights with the mark instruction then the mark will take the time of the q where they actually mark and now this is in Q7. So the lights will move into their position in three seconds because that's what Q7 is telling them to do. However, if in Q9 I went in and said, for example, those channels focus time 10 or those channels pan, tilt, or color, whatever, if I, if I put in discrete timing on the channel by picking a parameter, the mark would follow that time. The, the discrete timing overrides the mark timing. So that's something to keep in mind as well when you're looking at timing. Now, there is a feature in the console that will do all of this marking automatically. It's called Auto Mark, and it just the console will go through and figure out the best possible case on when to preset and ap apply those marks. And the only real option you have here is to disable the mark on a specific queue if it happens to um, be inconvenient for for those lights to mark at that time. And Auto Mark is turned on in system settings, so those are the two options. And that is how you will mark your non-intensity parameters on the EOS.